Yeah, Mara Lee, let me begin with you. I mean, here we had two of the Democrats, and there are no fewer than nine Republican candidates, some of whom will be here before August 28th. Um, you know, in some ways, even for us political types, all these candidates, I mean, maybe it's to be expected, but it's also confusing. It is very confusing. I've never heard of nine Republicans qualifying for a congressional race. I mean, so I'm, many candidates, so, so many, little time. I, yes, and I, I don't know all of them. I mean, I know the you know the ones that are more yeah. active in the Republican Bruno Party. Bruno Guerrero, for example, the former Miami-Dade commissioner. Um, absolutely, Maria Elvira Salazar, yes, who uh, appeared uh, also on Fox. Uh, on Fox, she was as Elvira. Uh, you know, Gina Sosa. Uh, it's also a strong Republican uh, we, candidate. We, right. we have them up on the screen as a cheat sheet for you. No, no, no. Bettina Rodriguez yeah. Aguilera, uh, who work in the city of Doral, and her, her daughter is married to, I think, the chief of staff for the vice president of the United States. Correct. Do you think um, in this race there are, or is, or are, a candidate or more that have the name recognition, such as what Donna Shalala might have on the Democrat field side? Yes. In, in the Republican side, we have uh, Bruno Barreiro and Maria Elvira Salazar. Those would be the considered frontrunners money-wise and also with name recognition. Mark, handicap this race. Well, I don't, like, I don't like to forejudge elections before they happen in Florida and even after they do happen sometimes. Well, no, just your, your own well, it's a seat analysis. That, it's a seat that Donald Trump lost by 20 points. And yeah. it's a seat that basically only Ileana Ross Leighton and at least conventional wisdom held could hold that as a Republican. She did win it as a Republican. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a tough haul for the Republicans. However, if it's a Barrero or if it's Salazar, mm -hmm. that at least gives sort of a contrast between uh, likely Donna Shalala, if all of the polling is right, yeah. because uh, you know, you'll have the Cuban-American community represented by people who speak Spanish. And uh, Donna's, uh, Donna's strength is not necessarily in Spanish speaking. She's not a native Spanish speaker. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Nancy, it, it would appear that health care, Obamacare, is going to be really maybe the big issue in the 27th, also in the 26th and the 25th. But, I mean, if you've got 96,000 people enrolled in Obamacare mm -hmm. in this congressional district, they want to keep that coverage. They want to keep that coverage. This community, of course, is ground zero for enrollees in Obamacare. Right. So to actually have um, a congressional representative who is, who is going, who is committed to keeping it in place, even though um, those who do have it, many who have it still talk trash about it, all Obamacare, right. but have signed yeah. up. It's a very interesting dichotomy. Right. And so that too will be um, a, a, some, a lot of wind behind Shalala's back. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know if, if the Affordable Care Act is really that great of a thing for Democrats. And the reason is it's been not a great thing for Democrats except mm -hmm. in part for President Obama. Mm -hmm. Every other election cycle we've had, we've had polling and we've had uh, anecdotes about how, you know what, the Affordable Care Act can go into effect. People are going to love it. Mm -hmm. They're going to vote those Republicans out. And it just doesn't really happen. And the other thing is you're compelled to buy Obamacare. Right. So I'd like to see more research showing. Well, you showing used to be compelled. The, well, that's the, a good point. The tax yeah. law right. took out the individual mandate. So it's not no longer must you buy it, but you, you can buy it.